Hello everyone and welcome to the Advanced Dictionaries lecture. So unlike some of the other data structures we've worked with, uh, a lot of the useful methods available to us in dictionaries have actually already been explored throughout this course. So we're just going to touch on a few more methods for dictionaries in this lecture and also dictionary comprehensions. So let's go ahead and get started with the live code. As always, the Jupyter Notebook's available for you if you want to check it out as well. Let's start by creating a very simple dictionary. We'll just have two keys, k1 with a value of 1, and we'll also have k2 with a value of 2. Okay, so here's our dictionary D, and what we're going to do is use that later on, but that's just to remind you for the syntax of a dictionary. If you remember from the list comprehension lecture, we were able to construct lists using list comprehension. So just like list comprehensions, dictionary data types also support their own version of comprehension. It's not super common to use it as much as list comprehension, but let's go ahead and still learn the syntax for it. So we'll start with a pair of brackets, and then what you do is you define the key and then the value in the same colon notation you would for a normal dictionary. And then you write whatever conditions you want. So in this case, what I'm going to do is say, have the key be x and the value be x squared for x in range um, 0 up to 10. So if you notice, we've actually been able to create a dictionary through this dictionary comprehension. Um, another question that might come up is, what if you want to assign keys that are not based on the values? Well, you could use zip. Um, in a manner like so. So I could say zip, maybe pass in a list. Here I'll just write a short list so I don't have to write too much. And then zip it, let me close off that string, with a range, let's just do a range of two here. And then we'll do tuple unpacking. So we'll say key value, value squared key, and looks like I accidentally forgot parentheses there. And there you have it. So again, it, this really isn't as common as list comprehensions. List comprehensions you'll see all the time. Dictionary comprehensions, it becomes hard to read, especially if you're trying to assign um, key names that are not based off values. So it's good that you're aware of it, but I wouldn't have it be your go-to um, throughout your coding. But who knows, if it's called for and it makes sense, go for it. All right, so next up, we're just going to review iteration over keys, values, and items. So dictionaries um, can be iterated using their iter methods. If you're using Python 2, so I can say for k and d dot iter, and you have iter items, iter values, iter keys. So here we have our iter items. Let's just go ahead and see what that looks like. Prints, we'll say k. And notice iter items actually returns tuples of both the keys and the values. We can also do just the values. And there we have it. And we can also do just the keys. And there you have that. Um, you can also use view methods to view uh, the items, keys, and values. So if you're using Python 2, you can say, we can actually grab all this, delete it, and just say d dot few items. That's the function, so you have to close it off. And it'll show you this object that's a view items. And then we can also say view keys. And then you probably guessed already, you can say view values. And there you have that. So that's really all the other methods that are in dictionaries that we haven't covered or seen throughout this course. Um, so I wouldn't say dictionary comprehensions are super common. Um, and depending on which Python version you use, uh, iteration over keys um, may be different for you if you're using Python 3. You won't have to worry about the generation issues. And as far as view items, if you have a large dictionary, you're going to want to be careful calling this because you may just get a huge output. All right. Well, that's it for the advanced dictionaries lecture. You should have been pretty f familiar with some of these already. And we'll go ahead and stop the lecture here. As always, you can check out the Jupyter Notebook for some more examples. Okay, thank you everyone. I'll see you at the next lecture.